Now, if you weren't aware of this already, if you didn't know that you don't actually own 100% of your 401k, you're probably asking, well, is there anything I can do about this? And there is actually, up to a point. The 401k might be the greatest tax incentive ever created. I call it the workhorse of retirement planning. Because for most Americans, this account does the heavy lifting. It often accounts for the lion's share of your net worth at the time of your retirement. So I took a deep dive into the math behind the 401k in my last video to show you how it can create a million dollars or more of incremental wealth. Today though, I wanna to talk about the biggest mistake that people make with their 401k because this has the potential to completely derail your retirement plans. Hi, I'm Michael Johnston. I'm a co-founder of Wealth Channel and the host of Wealth Channel Academy. And I'm on a mission to radically simplify the process of planning and investing for retirement. Okay, so let's just dive right into it. The biggest mistake that people make with the 401k is thinking that it's all theirs. Because unfortunately, that's not the case. So if you have a million dollars in your 401k, that does not mean you have a million dollars to spend in retirement. And that's because the money in your 401k has not yet been taxed, which effectively means that the federal government owns a piece of your 401k. And depending on where you live, your state government might effectively own a piece of it as well. So the 401k is a tax deferred account. Now, what that means is that you elected not to pay income taxes at the time your income was earned. You opted instead to put the money into a 401k and defer the payment of taxes until a later date. So in this case, the tax bill comes due when you make withdrawals from your 401k. For most people, that happens in retirement. They gradually sell the assets in their 401k and they use the proceeds to pay for living expenses. Now, this tax deferral, it's a beautiful thing. I always say the two best times to pay taxes are later and never. But if you're going to have to pay later, you need to plan for it. Now, if you weren't aware of this already, if you didn't know that you don't actually own 100% of your 401k, you're probably asking, well, is there anything I can do about this? And there is actually, up to a point, so withdrawals from a 401k are taxed as ordinary income. That means they get the same tax treatment as your salary or your paycheck. And in the US, we have a progressive income tax system, which means that the tax rate increases as your income does. So this creates an opportunity for you to strategically withdraw from your 401k so that you can hopefully avoid getting into these higher tax brackets. So let me show you what I mean with a simplified and extreme example. Let's say you've got a million dollars in a 401k and you're gonna pull it out all at once. So that would mean a million dollars in ordinary income, and a big chunk of that would be in the highest tax bracket. So your total tax bill would come to about $296,000. That's almost 30% of your total 401k. And we haven't even considered state taxes yet. More on that in just a minute. Now, alternatively, let's say you withdraw $50,000 a year for 20 years. That would keep you in the lower tax brackets. Your total tax bill would be about $5,000 a year and about $110,000 over 20 years. Now, that's still pretty significant, but it's not nearly as bad as in the first example. So I call this strategic de-accumulation, and it's one of the services that a lot of financial advisors can provide. They can take a look at your tax-deferred accounts, like your 401k, along with your taxable brokerage accounts and any tax-free accounts that you have, like a Roth IRA, and they can figure out the withdrawal strategy that minimizes taxes and maximizes what you get to keep. So you obviously need to consider this pending tax liability when determining whether or not you can retire. Again, even in the second example I just ran through, you don't actually have a million dollars to spend in retirement you'd owe more than $100,000 in federal income taxes. But you should also consider this when you're allocating assets. So let's say you have your 401k invested in a stock market index fund, and you're targeting a portfolio mix of 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds. So in my opinion, you should not use that million dollar number when you're tallying up your net exposure to stocks. Because again, that 401k, that million dollars is not all yours. Part of it is yours. And the other part is effectively an investment that you're holding for Uncle Sam. Now, another thing that you can control is the impact of state taxes on your 401k withdrawals. So there are nine states that have no state income tax. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, 
and Wyoming. And then there's four more states, Iowa, Mississippi, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. They have a state income tax, but they exempt distributions from 401k and pension plans. And then there's other states that exempt part of retirement plan withdrawals. So in Alabama, for example, the first $6,000 of retirement plan withdrawals is exempt from income taxes. In Georgia, taxpayers who are 65 and older can exclude up to $65,000 of retirement income. So Colorado, Delaware, Michigan, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oklahoma, and South Carolina, they all offer some sort of exemption from state income taxes for withdrawals from a 401k. And then in the other 29 states I didn't mention, withdrawals from your 401k are fully taxable. So if you really care about minimizing the taxes, you can elect to spend your retirement in a state that's more tax friendly towards retirees. And I just ran through those. Now there's another strategy that can lower your tax bill on 401k withdrawals that I'll mention briefly, and that is a Roth conversion. So essentially this means paying the taxes today so you can avoid them in the future. Now this conversion requires a pretty careful analysis and I'm gonna dive into the math behind it in a future episode. Now, one last point I wanna make here. By no means do I think the 401k is a scam or anything like that. It's quite the opposite, actually. Like I said at the beginning, I think it's the greatest tax incentive ever created, but it's important to understand what that tax incentive gets you and what it doesn't. Now, the 401k, it creates massive value by allowing investors to defer their income tax liability and it allows them to avoid taxes on dividends and capital gains altogether. But it doesn't allow them to completely avoid income taxes. Now, because it allows for tax-free growth, meaning there's no taxes on dividends or capital gains, the tax bill that eventually does come due is a lot bigger than most people realize. And that's actually a good thing. The bigger your tax bill, that means the more wealth you've created by using a 401k. But it won't feel like a good thing at the time. It never feels good to pay taxes, especially a tax bill that you weren't counting on or that's bigger than you expected. So I hate to have been the bearer of bad news here. If that's the case, hopefully this realization can help you to more effectively plan for retirement. And by the way, I publish videos like this one every week. So if you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button right now. And if you have questions on this or thoughts, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them.